travel to a lot, a lot of churches, and we are blessed with great musicians, amen, great musicians, thank y'all, give them another hand, <laughs> amen, Brother Barry, lead us in prayer, would you please, sir, Amen. We can be seated if you'd like. I tell you, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Uh, we were blessed uh, with a good crowd this morning and uh, visitors. And I tell you, when as they left today, they were going, Preacher, this is great. And hey, let's, don't lose sight, lose, let's not lose sight of what God has done for Westside Baptist Church. Uh, we need to be grateful. 
because uh, it's not owed us, is it? We learned that when the tornado came through. <laughs> I mean, to tell you, God could have let this thing be ripped up by the foundations if he if he'd wanted to, but he didn't. And so we're blessed that we have an auditorium that we can meet in. There are churches that can't do that. I spoke to a lady, a church near the town square, just this side of the town square, and she said our entire roof was pulled right off the building. We can't even meet there. We're having to meet in an ele- one of the elementary schools here in the county. So, folks, we need to pray for those churches, if they're Bible-believing churches, that uh, they'll get on their feet and win souls to Christ. If they're not Bible-believing churches, let's just pray they dry up and go away. That'd be the best thing that ever happened to them and the community. But like I said, if they're Bible-believing churches, we need all hands on deck. So I tell you what, I'm just uh, enjoyed this morning. I, uh, God blessed this preacher with freedom, and I believe that only comes because there's some of you out there that are praying for me, and I thank you for that. Y'all come and let's sing a song. I'm going to drink some water, amen. Brother Dwayne, I don't know what phone you have. Okay. Do you're about to climb. You're about to climb.
what you have dreamed and they're yours for the taking if you dare to believe so leave your doubts behind and let god make you brave because he has gone before you he's already made the way take a step of faith and it's time to move lay aside your fears and watch what god will do there's victory ahead that mountain's not too high friend hold on cause you're about to climb you may feel you can't go on and it just seems too hard but if you put your hand in his he will take you to the stars take a step of faith and it's time to move lay aside your fears and watch what god will do there's victory situation with cancer not to off her feet as you can imagine but there came a point where she said you know we've got this and that's the way we need to be yep. when it comes to the trials and tribulations of this life and that is with God's help we've got this and it doesn't matter how high the mountain may be how low the valley may go with God's help we've got this blessed be the name of the Lord go ahead and sing another one And trials hard to bear, yeah. but I know there's a God who hears and He still answers prayer. He will listen when you call. He knows exactly what to do Cause he's never failed one yet And he won't start with you So through the valley Deep or wide Or on the mountain Peaks so high when you're happy, when you're sad, he'll be the best friend you've ever had. So if you feel you can't go on, he'll be there to see you through. Cause he's never failed one yet And he won't start with you 
go and ask Abraham walking Isaac up that lonely hill or ask the widow about the time her empty barrel was filled or ask Peter in the jail the night the church of God they prayed through they'd all say he's never failed one yet no and he won't start with you so through the valley deep or wide or on the mountain peak so high when you're happy when you're sad he'll be the best friend you've ever had hey. so if you feel you can't go on he'll be there to see you through cause he's never failed one yet and he won't start with you. I'm so glad my God's never, he's never failed one yet. And he won't start with you. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad we serve a God that cannot fail? And aren't you glad we serve a God that cannot fail you or myself? I tell you what, that makes it all worthwhile. I'm so glad we've got a Savior. I'm glad we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. As we talk this morning, I want to say again that he's right in the slab. He's the centerpiece. And uh, everything revolves around him. There's times when things go south for us. I got to tell you, whoever buys these from now on, buy, the, buy something with a thicker. I can't. Glad we have a God who is the centerpiece of our lives. We lose sight about uh, we we lose sight of that some sight of that sometimes. But the fact of the matter is, folks, He is the centerpiece. Not only is He the centerpiece, but He's our cornerstone. Not only is he our cornerstone, but he is our flat stone, which references our foundation. By definition, he's also our boulder. <clears throat> I was watching a documentary the other night, and they were showing some odd rock, shapes of rocks, and I forget what they call them, so you forgive me, but it'd be like a, a bolt, a great big boulder and it would be perched up by a very small amount of rocks and they're so fragile that people are able to go and push them over it's against the law but people will push them over because they're like natural artwork it's just beautiful but I'm glad that uh, we can't push our boulder over <laughs> Amen. I just want to mention uh, this evening, I want us to look at Matthew chapter 11 for a few moments, and I'm sorry I, I uh, misquote Matthew chapter 3, please. Matthew chapter 3, 
we'll go to Matthew chapter 11 um, in just a minute, but I'm still rejoicing over this morning. Not because of the crowd, not because that uh, because we had guests or visitors, not because they were so overtaken by what God has done for us here at Westside, and they were bragging on this church. But I'm thrilled because I saw and felt the sweet spirit of God sweep through here this morning. Uh, Lisa and I came over here twice yesterday, and the first time I found myself pacing back and forth right here, doing as so many times before, and asking the Lord to just show up. And I don't mean necessarily a a, a great emotional service, although I'm all for that. But I just wanted him to be here. And folks, he was here, and I believe he is here. And because of that, I hope that we'll go out and invite our friends, our family, our co-workers, our neighbors to come to church. In Matthew chapter 3, we... Yes, ma'am. No, no, you go right ahead. You say something, Miss Betty. Absolutely. Now, uh, where do they live? Where do they live? Moreland. Okay, okay. Well, we'll be praying for them. And uh, Well, this morning we beat that horse, didn't we? <laughs> we sure will, Miss Betty. Amen. Let's pr- let's pray for that couple. They need the Lord. And thank you, sister. I appreciate it. Now, how much did you say I have to pay you for saying that? <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. Well, I want us to look at the account just for a moment before we do uh, move into the baptism part of our service. I'm looking forward to to baptizing Cooper. Uh, he's a blessing to this pastor He's a blessing to West Side Baptist Church. And I can tell you this, I, I'm not trying to toot anybody's horn. I'm not trying to flatter anyone. I, I mean that. But I really mean, Jacob's been a blessing to West Side Baptist Church. <clears throat> I told him it's recently, I can't remember exactly when, but it's been recent. I said, I want you to know you're an encouragement to this preacher. And uh, a lot of Young men like that are looking for the exit instead of looking for the entrance. So I, I just want to thank God for sending us Jacob. I thank God for you too, but uh, <laughs> not nearly as much as I do Jacob and Cooper. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to read this, give you some thoughts. And then we're going to go and baptize Cooper. But the Bible is giving us the account in Matthew chapter 3 of the baptism of Jesus Christ. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him 
And now, now understand what was just said, to be baptized. In other words, this was, <clears throat> this was not happenstance. This was predetermined. This was predetermined that it was going to happen because he went to the Jordan under John for a definite reason, to be baptized of him, meaning John. <clears throat> but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? Now, I can understand John the Baptist's dilemma, couldn't you? Uh, doesn't it kind of coincide with uh, when Jesus tried to wash, wash the disciples' feet? There were protests, right? Uh, we need to be washing yours, don't you wash in ours? Well, this was maybe not a protest, but I believe it was an act of humility, and it shows where John's heart, John the Baptist's heart is when he says, Oh, no, Lord, please, I, I, I should be baptized by you. I, basically, he's saying, Lord, I'm not worthy to baptize you. And there's truth to that outside of the mercy and graciousness of God. But verse 15 had to happen. <clears throat> and Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. Notice he, he wasn't beating around the bush with John the Baptist. He suffered it to be so now. And, and, and I got to tell you, when, when the Lord says do it now, something happened. Remember, it was the Lord Jesus that said, let there be. Yeah. And you go through the six days, and there's a lot of let there being. And folks, it happened just like that. So when the creator of the universe says, baptize me now, and he's not asking, he's telling, I'm telling you, John the Baptist uh, had to baptize him. He couldn't get out of it. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, <clears throat> this had to be fulfilled or it would be a mark against who he is, meaning Jesus is. Uh, to not step into the, the avenue of baptism would have been disobedience because of what the prophets had said. And if you uh, read this, he says this again, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus explained that in, in other words, Jesus is explaining here that baptism was ex essential to his perfection. Not that he needed to be baptized to be perfect, but it had been said that there would be a man, a forerunner, John the Baptist, and so this thing had to happen in order to completely fulfill the prophecy of, out of um, Isaiah chapter 40, I believe, in verse 3. So once again, we get back into the Old Testament, and we find Jesus. I'm sorry, guys. I can't help it. It's the way the Bible's written. I'm not preaching on that. That's not that our message, but how can we? Praise God. So, so anyhow, uh, Jesus wish to please his father by obeying the commandments of the prophets. Now, John the Baptist was, was known as one of the greatest of the prophets. Matter of fact, I want to read that to you if you don't mind. Because Jesus said, for this is he whom it is written, Behold, I send a messenger before for thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And so it had been 
prophesied, yes, by John the Baptist, also Isaiah 40 and verse 3, that there will be a forerunner of Jesus Christ. And we see this prophecy being fulfilled partially on this day. And then we read in verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And he says this, and I want you to, <clears throat> to understand. Lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. In verse 16, I believe that this is made clear when it says the heavens were open. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. This was supernatural. This was divine, and it was done in divine order. And it was important for the author to make this clear that this was not by happenstance. This was done in verse 15 because Jesus said, baptize me, baptize me now. It was a fulfillment of what they said in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, I believe it is. And then we also see uh, that chapter is made a uh, reference to over here in chapter 11 and in verse 10. So we see that, and I want to go back, if I can, to the first part of chapter 3 of Matthew. Listen to what it says. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. See, even the New Testament references Isaiah's uh, uh, pr prophecy concerning John the Baptist. That the voice of one crying, crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And if you go and read what Isaiah says, it's literally word for word of what is told us in the New Testament. So we have... The Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> submitting himself to what God the Father had fed the Old Testament prophets. And Jesus is saying, out of obedience, I will fulfill every one of the prophecies that were given. And that took an all-knowing, but it also takes and took a righteous God. It says this in verse 15 of Matthew. Thus it became, uh, becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So we have our Lord being baptized. And he's doing it not that he can be saved. Because he was the Savior. Amen. In other words, he was here to save your soul and your soul and your soul and your soul. Therefore, we call him the Savior. Amen. And uh, that is a blessing, needless to say. But, you know, I was reading after one fella, and I, I'm not sure I totally agree with him. But if you look back in Exodus chapter 30, and Brother William, we're not going to put this message on online because it's so horrible. But I just want to share with you what, what I... I mean, you can put it online tonight, but just don't record it and put it online. I, it's, I don't feel good about this message. But I, I can't help it. I, I want to share this with you. I was reading after one man, uh, actually more than one. And he said that he believes baptism is not totally fulfilled or shown in the Old Testament, but he said this, that in, over in Exodus chapter, I think it was 30, that you had 
Moses instruct Aaron and his sons, the priests. And you know what they had to do before they uh, turned over a sacrifice to be killed? <clears throat> you know what they had to do before they could act, if I may say, as an intercessor between the children of Israel and uh, God? Do you know what they had to do? They had to bathe themselves. And this particular theologian says that he believes this is a type of baptism and that by being obedient as they were, they were able to be the mediator between God and man at that time, the high priest and the priest. And likewise, now we have the high priest, Jesus Christ, who was baptized and himself had to be sacrificed. Before he could be sacrificed, he had to be baptized. And so we see the, the, in, in the Old Testament, I, I, I personally believe, I believe we're seeing a hint, if I may say, in Exodus 30, of baptism. So if you say preacher is baptism in the Old Testament, I cannot tell you that immersion uh, is in the Old Testament. Now, it may be there, and if it is, please tell me. I could be overlooking it, forgetting it, uh, and that's fine. But when I read Exodus 30, I thought, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I enjoyed it. And I don't know if you enjoyed it or not, but there it is, folks. Jesus, perfect, righteous, fulfilling again. All Old Testament prophecies. Blessed be his name. Brother Dave, you come and let somebody sing or congregation sing, whatever y'all want to do. And Cooper, you and your mama need to go to the bathroom on this side. And I'm going to go over here and we're going to change clothes and I'll come around and get you. And we're going to let Cooper take that first step of obedience. Isn't that wonderful? In his Christian walk. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing victory in Jesus. All right, let's do victory in Jesus. What page is that, Miss Linda? Y'all knew that. 120. I've gotten used to using screens and I forgot what pages are what. That's bad, isn't it? Let's everybody stand. Let's sing victory in Jesus. We're going to sing all three verses. I'm singing on the first line. Precious blood. Uh -huh. 
could just a couple of you deacons go out to the foyer and shake hands as people go out I sure would appreciate it it's such a blessing as long as I don't drop it I'll be safe it's such a blessing brother you cut the lights on uh, please and uh, let's be dismissed in prayer I'm going to ask uh, Wesley if you would stand up and just dismiss us okay